Hello again. I dare say that viewers will have noticed that some animals produce loads of offspring and then leave them to their own devices in the hope that at least a few will make it to maturity. After frog spawn, for example, there are hundreds of tadpoles in the pond, most of which are eaten by predators. By sheer weight of numbers, a few will survive to become breeding frogs. The frogs themselves show no interest whatsoever in the tadpoles, as far as they're concerned, just knocking out as many babies as possible is all they need to do to ensure continuation of their species. They don't care, you've never seen a frog caring for a tadpole. This is known to biologists as the R strategy. Turn out a lot of kids, don't bother looking after them, and some at least will grow up. At the other end of the spectrum of reproductive strategies are the K parents. These are mammals like big cats, whales and humans. There are usually one or two babies. They are cared for well by the parents and looked after until they are able to live and breed independently. This sort of thing is usually contingent upon having other adults helping beside the mother. So. Typically you'll have pair bonding where a man and a female will get together, this is the case whether they're humans or cats, and they'll look after the kids or sort of, you know, at least the other parent will play a role in the upbringing of the children. For the offspring of these two strategies, life is very different. The many progeny of our reproducers tend to have lower life expectancies. They mature earlier and are capable of breeding at a young age. They receive little or no care from parents, who themselves are in the habit of having so many babies that they don't really pay attention to any of them in particular. The motto for our producers, or our reproducers I suppose I should say, might be live fast, die young and have lots of babies while you're at it. It has been suggested that different human populations or ethnicities follow reproductive strategies which are part of this same RK spectrum, the one that we observe in nature. In a sense, it would not be at all surprising if this were to be the case. Humans are animals like any other, and there's no reason why we should deviate especially from what we observe generally in nature. The important thing to remember is that the RK is a spectrum. It's not a case of either or. Mice tend to reproduce very rapidly and have large litters, but they do offer some early care to their babies, as opposed to fish, say, who simply lay eggs and then leave the kids to it. Humans, of course, tend towards the K end of the spectrum, as being nurturing parents and investing a lot of care in their offspring. This does seem to vary, though, between ethnicities, and some anthropologists have thought that this might explain some of the differing lifestyles and outcomes which we frequently see in different ethnic groups. For instance, parents from East Asia are very strongly at the K end. They usually have few babies and then put a lot of care and attention into ensuring the best possible outcomes for them. As a result, the children tend to live longer and start families of their own at a later age than some other populations. The care which the parents have demonstrated is revealed in the better standards of living for the children as they raise families of their own. White Europeans also tend towards the K end of the spectrum, but there are exceptions. Although most expend much care on the offspring, Others are careless and simply breed randomly with little thought about the consequences. It is when looking at human populations of African origin that some researchers have thought that they see distinct evidence of R strategies dominating over the more typical K behaviour. This, it has been hypothesis, hypothesised, explains some of the disadvantages experienced, say, by African Americans African Americans tend to have a lower life expectancy rates at birth than either white Europeans or those of East Asian heritage. Puberty also arrives earlier for black Americans and other ethnic groups. 
This may be a consequence of the reproductive strategy adopted by parents, which appears to follow the R pattern at which we have looked. For example, pair bonding, where a male and female stay together to raise their offspring, is far less common among African Americans than Asians or people of white European origin. There seems to be an increased tendency among males to seek out and mate with a number of females and then leave the offspring to cope for themselves. Such females are known demotically as baby mothers. These couplings are not done forcefully. They actually with the full consent of the female. The female in turn tends to couple with other males with the result that she'll end up raising children from different fathers. This behaviour is of course observed also in some groups of white European heritage females but hardly ever among those whose families are from East Asia. Such behaviour increases the likelihood of the offspring engaging in risk-taking, dangerous or criminal actions as well as reducing their life expectancy. As I say, this is not an either-or situation. It's a spectrum, and R-type behaviour can certainly be observed among some people of white European ancestry, although very seldom in anybody from Asia. I would be interested to know if viewers in Britain have noticed any general trends in society upon which this hypothesis might shed light either in the matter of reproduction, aberrant behaviour, life expectancy, or indeed anything else. <laughs>